stand in front of this stool and I'm going to do what I do, which is I move you around. Yeah. And your job, you've got the easy job, I've got the difficult job. Your job is to let me move you. Okay. I might move an arm, I might move your head. I might ask you to walk or go onto your toes or sit in the chair. And as far as possible, you let me do the moving. Okay. That's it. And you don't have to make yourself comfortable. You don't have to have a good posture. And the most important thing right now is to know you can't make a mistake today. Okay. I can screw up, you can't. So you stand in front cool. of the stool. You, you stand in front of the stool and you're going to look out the window. That's fine. And put your feet a little bit wider apart. Yeah. So I'm, I'm here and I'm doing what I do. So I place my hands here and I will not do any funny manipulations like an osteopathic click. So don't worry, there'll be nothing sudden that's going to, going to happen. Anything that feels funny or feels wrong or feels interesting, feel free to share it, talk to me. So as you're standing there, you talked about posture and your scapulae. Does anything feel uncomfortable in you as you're just starting out? No. Right, right now? No. So you feel, you're reasonably comfortable right now? Yeah. Fine. So I'm the mover. You can see I'm moving the, the head around. Do you do anything for your body health during the week? Do you do gym? Do you do like regular massages? What, 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 do, you, what do you have for yourself? Running, yeah. yoga, meditation, yeah. stretching, yeah. exercise. Mm -hmm. So would you say that you're quite good at relaxation? I think so. As a, as a result of the yoga and the meditation? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah? Mm. So this is a sort of a request for surrendering control. So I'm the controller of your head right now, aren't I? I'm the mover of your head and you're letting me move it. And now I'm going to leave it in a funny position for a while. Yeah. And I want you to choose now, choose now to be very soft behind the knees, but not bending them. Not overly straight, but not bent. Just a little bit soft behind the knees. So that there's a certain amount of give in, in the area behind the knees. And I'm going to move your head here. That's it. And you're doing really well at not helping me. You can see I'm moving your head and you're just letting me take it to different places. Now I'm going to move it there. I'm going to move it there. Yeah. And I'm going to take an arm. Same thing. I've got the weight of your arm. And if it lets go, it goes where it goes. Now it's going to get a touch more complicated. You're going to now take your hips back as you bend the knees, as you reach the chair, bend the knees, all the way till you reach the, reach the stool. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> and then, I found that Yeah, because you weren't sure the stool was there probably. <laughs> Some people check behind them, as you're taking it away and doing a trick on me or something. So I'm going to move you forwards. Yep. Yeah. And wait. And anything that feels weird or interesting, as I said, or different, do you just let me know. Okay. So I'm going to move you forwards again, and there's nothing you need to do about it. Wait there. And nothing here. Leave the feet where they are. I'm going to move you further forwards. And now, leaving the feet where they are, I want you to stand up, including your heels. Yes, and wait there for a while. Now, leaving the feet where they are, I want your hips to come back as you bend the knees. All the way to the stool. Bend the knees forwards and leave the feet where they are. And heels. Stand up. And bend the knees. And stop. Heels down. Mm -hmm. Bend the knees again. I'm going to repeat this a few times. Wait. Stand up with the heels. And bend the knees. and heels, and then bend the knees again. Knees forwards and wait, and heels, and bend the knees. So what do you think is happening as you're coming in and out of the chair? What do you think is working and what isn't working? Bend the knees. Quads are working. Quads are working, correct. So front of the legs are working. Yeah. And what's happening with the hips upwards? Bend the knees. Feel relaxed. Yes, yeah, so if I said to you, is anything happening? Hips upwards, are you using those muscles in, a, in, in, in an effortful way? Not really. So what do you feel is working? As you said, quads are working. Yeah. And what's happening in the neck and back and 
Feels relaxed. Feels relaxed. Staying relaxed is not active. In other words, they're not, your neck and shoulders and scapulae and lower back is not participating in this demanding movement in and out of a chair. Would that make sense? Yeah. And then heels and bend the knees. And I'll take you back and then wait there. Yeah, so what does the back feel like it's doing right now? Mm. Or how would you say you're sitting, for instance, right now? I feel like I'm sitting nice. Mm -hmm. Are you making any effort? Not really. No, so the niceness of the sitting is happening without any sit up straight young lady sort of thing. Mm. It's happening. How have you done that? Well, you did it, but we'll, we'll, get, to, we'll get to that. But yes, you're, you're sitting up beautifully upright, if you look at yourself in the mirror. Mm. And you're, you're not doing, ooh, like you showed me before for a split yeah, second. No, no. You're not exactly, you're not doing any of that. But it's happening by itself. In other words, it's organic, it's something inside of you that's lifting you, and it's not me, and it's not your effort. Mm. I'm going to take you forwards again. Now you could say, and you, you, you ask the question, how did I do it? I throw the question back at you. What's the condition of your mind now compared to, say, five or ten minutes ago? I feel very relaxed. Right. Not your normal relax. No, it's because somebody's Correct. touching and... Correct. Yeah. So clearly it's, it's something to do with the, the, the someone touching you. That's true. And I'll take you further forwards and stop. Mm-hmm. That's it. Now put your feet a bit further back so they're a little, a little bit further underneath you. That's fine. And I'll move you backwards again. So yes, you're right. Something about what we're doing with the touch is creating a certain amount of what you called relaxation. Mm -hmm. Yeah? That your mind is in a certain condition, not perhaps your everyday condition, right? And that's got something to do with this poise or postural pattern that's lifting you without your effort. So now stand up with the heels. Yeah. And and then bend the knees again all the way. And stop at the stool, wait. And then heels. And bend the knees. And stop. And heels, and bend the knees. What's it like to move like this? Heels. It's really nice. Bend the knees. Why is it nice? What's nice about it? Can you put your finger on it? I think because I'm conscious mm. of my movement rather than just throwing myself. Exactly. You're not okay. exactly. You're not just chucking yourself around. I'm normally just. You're actually participating. Well, you're actually in the movement. You're not snatching at the movement. It's not like a big adrenal smash and grab. Normally just sit, say, stand. Oh, yeah, exactly. that the plonk and the snatch and the plonk and the snatch and the rush and the busy and the eh. Uh, and your brain is in a got to get there and got to get there and your body then reflects that by going jagged and braced and the neck tightens and the shoulders pull up and the lower back pulls in and the brain and the body go into this state of readiness for the next emergency. Mm. But right now, as you quite rightly said, you're just sort of participating in the movement. You're here. Mm. You're available. You're not stressing out over getting in and out of a chair like you would yeah. normally. You're not snatching at it or throwing yourself about. Normally quite a jagged move. Jagged yes. move. And this is, this, you're just in a rather smooth condition. And the key to that is, the reason why you're in such a smooth condition is because your brain is in a certain gear. So let's explore what gear is your brain in. Hips back and bend the knees. Yeah, whatever speed, because it's not about slow motion. That your brain is in a certain gear, whether you're sitting, standing, or having a conversation with me, you're not in a snatchy mood. That, that feels good. Yes, so that sh <laughs> your scapula now can move. Yeah, now it can move out because it's not grabbing, it's not holding itself. 
you know, that can move now without any effort at all. And that's it. Same thing here. You see that scapula just moves. Mm. Scapula, that's it. And it just moves there. I've got your arm. Don't help me. That's fine too. And the arm goes where it goes. And I'm still going to move you. I'm going to move you here. Nothing changes. And even now you're not relaxing and collapsing in a heap, are you? You're just moving backwards and forwards. So what condition is the brain staying in, whether you're backwards or forwards or just sitting there still? What condition is the brain in? Calm. It's staying calm, that's it. It's staying stress managed. It's not freaking out, is it? No. You're calm here. You calm here, you calm here, you calm here, wait there for a while, leave the feet where they are, you calm here, stand up with the heels, and you calm there. But there's... <laughs> it's weird, isn't it? It's so simple. It is, it is too simple for words in a way, isn't That's it? That's crazy, isn't it? It is simple, and it's still, and it's calm all the way through. So even if you're walking around the room, walk around. Yeah, you can walk as quickly as you like. It's not about speed. So what condition are you in while you're walking? So calm. Calm, yeah. Mm. So what we lose in everyday life when we get a, a little older, we lose the ability to recover calm and keep calm going in everyday life. That actually life becomes a snatch and a grab. Mm. Or a smash and a grab. A push and a pull. Mm. An adrenal rush. A constant emergency where we're halfway towards freak out every five seconds. And therefore we never recover the, the state of true relaxation that can be actually a component to everyday life. Mm. Um, a large part, apart from the everyday emergencies, that actually we don't recover back to that level of stillness and calm that can be there when we're moving, sitting, standing, swimming, doing sport, running. Mm engaging in difficult conversations with people. So you can see it's not about your postural pattern. Your postural pattern is really, it's really a reflection of what your brain's up to. If your brain is in a bit of a, uh, a stressy condition, your body will reflect that. We call it loosely block body language. Yeah, you, you, you can understand that. Now the, the stool is right behind you. Don't change anything. Now take the hips back and bend the knees. And then at the stool weight there, and I'll move you backwards. Yeah. And it's got nothing to do with you being quiet or not quiet. It's to do with the brain, whether you're shouting at somebody, or singing a song, or running a race. The background condition can be one of, I'm okay. I'm not adrenalized. I'm not in an emergency situation. I'm not freaking out. Mm. I have this inner calm even if the, the rest of the world is going bonkers. So I'm moving you further forwards. Stop. Can you see that you're still in the same condition? Mm. You're here in the same condition. You're thinking about what we're doing in the same condition. You're being moved forwards in the same condition of ease. And you could call it, if, if you want to a neurological description, you're not reacting mm. to the events, the events of everyday life. You're not reacting as I take you back. Your brain is remaining quiet and not reactive. It's re remaining quiet and non-reactive as you come forwards. It's remaining quiet and non-reactive as you stand up with your heels. What's it like to come out of a chair like that? It's delightfully simple, isn't it? Yeah. And wait there for a little while. And I'm going to move you here. That's it, and I'm moving you here and wait. And wait there and stop. My job, your job, is to recover that quality of ease and inner calm that will animate your body into a very, very different condition where you won't get aches and pains in your scapula because you won't be pinching them with stress and adrenaline and rush and I'm late and I've got this to do and we go into that flight fight response mm -hmm. or flight fight freeze. Yeah, I think all of I that stuff. That. We Same, all do. Quite a lot. We all do. And, and this is hopefully a way of integrating uh, a much more biologically harmonious condition 
into everyday activities rather than time out, which is very nice, like yoga and meditation often is more time out and then we go back to our crazy lifestyles. So you could say Alexander has some connection to these other things, but it's time in. Mm. It's actually, can I actually have some of this okayness in everyday life, mm. in activities, in whatever I'm up to, rather than I need to take time out to chill out and then I'll go back to being bonkers. Yeah, I feel as though I haven't... Don't change anything. Like yeah. It's, it's, it's either go, 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 or right, now I need to relax. That's right, and the relax usually that we do then is like either a, you know, half a bottle of wine or more, and then, oh, that's better. Turns so into a task. Into, into, into a task of I do the relaxation, which is a doing of collapse, bleh, or I, I'm busy. Mm. And we never find the third way. Mm. So don't do anything with your shoulders because it'll find itself. I keep doing it. <laughs> I know. Yeah, it's a, everyone <laughs> does. So do nothing in your shoulders. And it's quite interesting. People have a, there's a reason why people like to stay busy. Because it's a bit of an addiction. Actually, people don't like being still, despite what they'll tell you. They don't, look, they don't really want to be relaxed on some level. They actually are quite addicted to being quite frenetically busy or switching off and going to sleep. But the other opportunity of being open and available like you are right now and being awake and calm is something that most of us hardly ever experience. So you have this condition as your hips come back and knees bend. And wait there, and wait there, and wait there, exactly. So what's it like being still in this condition? Not still in terms of the absence of movement, but still in your nervous system, in your, in your mind, in your, in your brain. What's it like being in this condition of... Ooh, Laura's quite quiet inside. She's not on an edge. Is it easy or is there a level of... Mm, this isn't such an easy place to be, although it's rather nice and delicious. No, it's easy. Is it easy? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so it is easy on many, many levels, but most of us don't find it easy to stay in this condition. No. So let me move you further forwards. Should I go and tell them to stop doing that for a while? I can do that. Only if Does it's that not a bother. Yes. Only yeah. if they don't mind. Should I, should I try? Just for like another... Oh, yeah. Yeah. So back to that, back to that question before, exploring... What you said, you said it's easy to be in this condition. Now it's suggesting, well, it is easy and it's harmonious and it's efficient and it's quite nice to be in a calm state of mind and body. But then we have to think, why don't we always inhabit this condition? Mm. So hips back and bend the knees. That's fine. In other words, why do we seem quite addicted to the, the experience of busyness and speed? Or mania and certain behaviours that keep this whole nervous system going at 100 miles an hour. That's it, so nothing here. And nothing here, and wait. And now I'm going to move you forward again. So very still in the mind-body as I move you forward, stop. Wait there. Gently fall backwards against me. That's it, and wait there. Now fall backwards a touch more, and don't move away from the falling backwards. That's it, gently fall backwards at the same time as your heels go down. Right, what's it like to come out of a chair like that? I've never got out of a chair like that, ever. No. What was the difference? Apart from the angle, for instance, which may... Everything felt quite balanced. Exactly. Like felt a balanced. concertina. Like a concertina. That you just unconcertina with the minimum of effort, almost like it's poof. There yeah, you were. Like levers. Yeah, like levers. Mm. Yeah. Mm. 
Now quiet in the eyebrows, quiet in the jaw. Yeah, leave the tongue resting on the bottom of the mouth. And again, hips and knees bending. Let the stool stop and wait there. And heels. And bend the knees. And stop. And heels. And bend the knees. And fall backwards gently. And then bend the knees again. And wait there. Fall backwards gently against me. Backwards, backwards, that's it. And stay falling gently backwards at the same time as heels. And then bend the knees again. And heels. And bend the knees. And heels. And bend the knees. And heels. And bend the knees. And then heels. And wait there. Yeah, so in this different condition or new condition, what's it like to, what would it be like to have a conversation in this condition without changing too much? Does it feel like it would it be a different way of talking to somebody? Yeah. Never mind having a run. Don't change your shoulders yet. I think because... In this condition, you're just having a conversation feel, now. I don't want to move, though. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can move anything you like, as in move, but the condition is still there. Exactly, right. Exactly, a bit more animated. Mm. So what's it like not to do that one? What's it like to have a conversation without the, hi, let's do this, and whatever, right, whatever. You're coming off a certain button, and you're talking to this in this very different condition, mm. without the, that you showed me. Is it easy? Or is there something about it that's a little unfamiliar? Yeah, that, a little bit edgy? I can tell you, I can't tell you how communicating like this is, but I can tell you how communicating yeah. like my other ways. Nervous energy. Nervous energy, exactly. That's a normal for most of us. So the, the opposite. The absence of that. Mm. The absence of that is a different sort of energy, isn't yeah. it? So what's it like? I say hello to you like this, with this energy. It doesn't feel like me. Exactly. It doesn't feel like <laughs> it you. It's like somebody what else. Is this? So what is this you that doesn't do the ha, ah, da da? Sure. Who am I that doesn't do ta da? I think if people were to meet me, they'd my think, friends would go, are you okay? Yeah, that's right. Are you okay? You're not full of beans or something yeah yeah okay so on one level you f may feel it's not going to be so acceptable to not come from this more stressed state which feels nicer <laughs> yeah what can you hear that your voice has totally changed dramatically yeah. you're you're talking from here mm. you're not talking from here is that what i was like when i first got here well, yeah everyone does it's mm. pretty normal we talk from neck upwards now you're talking from the whole Stop voice, vo the whole voice this box. This is ridiculous. It is. It's bonkers, isn't it? Yeah. It is. It is bonkers. So yes. Yeah, so you're communicating with me from a different level, where you think your friends would think, "What's she, she on? Is she all right?" In other words, in order for you to think that you're okay in a social setting, you have to be, ta-da, mm. which is you know quite a lot of energy, which is quite tiring, and it gives you a pinch here in your shoulders. And you probably end up, uh, the, at the end of the day, quite depleted. But this energy is quite economical. Mm. You can still be animated if you want. Tell a funny story or whatever you want to do. But there's a softness to you, a certain gentleness and kindness to you, to you that is a different way of being. Mm. And again, nothing to do here. Nothing to do at all. And now go on to the tip of your toes. Yeah. And then come down to the heels and stop. And then take the hips back and bend the knees again. Yeah, all the way. And then wait there and I'll take you back. Yep. Yeah. That's fine, eyes open. Yeah, any thoughts popping in? How relaxed I am. Yeah, very, very relaxed, very deeply relaxed, yeah. Your body's lifting itself up very naturally. You're not sitting up straight. You're just naturally poised. And um, you can feel that your body's looking after itself kindly and efficiently. And you haven't had a massage or... That you haven't. 
You haven't taken a chill pill. Yeah, and you're waiting there, and you're in this different way of being in the world. So you have a different relationship to yourself, and obviously a very different relationship to me. It's the you. I don't know you, so I don't think you're feeling. You know, I don't think you're particularly weird by not going da da. <laughs> you, you seem normal to me because I, I don't think, know. I don't know you. I feel excited about being so calm. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so it's the opposite. It is. Yeah. Let me move. Yeah. So, yeah. And wait there for a while. Yeah. But on some level, you've already admitted that it it, it may not be socially too acceptable. People think you're a little bit weird. What's wrong with her? Oh dear, she must be feeling a bit poorly. <laughs> Let me take you further forwards. Yeah, yeah. So on one level, you may not feel normal. Put your feet a bit further back for now, and then stand up with the heels. Exactly. Yeah. And then walk around a little bit with that condition. Yeah, yeah, any speed you like. What's it like walking around in that condition? I feel... What is the Laura that's walking around in this condition? It's kind of indescribable, mm. actually. Mm. Can't keep saying calm, can I? No, it's not a bad term. You might find other words as well. Calm, relaxed, still, peaceful, peaceful um, economical, aware. flowing, aware. It's pre your, your mind is very present, it's not jumping into the future. This is the meaning of the word mindfulness. Mm. Often people say, what is mindfulness? Is it trying to be aware of my body? No, it's not. Are you trying to be aware of your body right now? No. But you're here. And you're not there. You're not in the future about what's going to happen tonight. And you're not in the past, wondering what you've just done. Mm. You're here, having a conversation with me, very present. And you're very alive and very, very resonant with me. You're really able to listen to me and I'm able to see you. That's a very different way of relating, isn't it? Mm. It's not the normal way we relate where we can't hear. We're jumping onto the next sentence and trying to convince somebody of something, but you're just here. So this is mindful. This is being in the moment. This is being present. It's, it's kind of how I would imagine mindful walking. It's, it's mindful walk, mindfulness, or whether you walk. Absolutely. 100%. 100%. It would overlap with those things. The trouble is when people try to be mindful, they end up with this rather strange concentration thing and they become very ungainly. I'm trying to be mindful, I'm trying to be mindful and that's, that's clearly not what you're, you're doing right now. You're just manifesting mindfulness but without trying to be mindful. So that's a different way of reaching mindfulness, not by trying to achieve it, by letting it happen organically. A very different way of being. So let's take it a bit further with your shoes off or when you're on the table. You get yourself in the middle of the table and come back another inch or so to me. That's it, perfectly, and let yourself roll down, and I've got the weight of your head. And actually inch yourself down a little bit this way. That's perfect. So now I'm going to do the same thing as before, move around a leg, an arm, and you're going to let me do the moving. Great. Without me forcing anything and without you helping me. So I'm going to lift up a leg. And also feel free to ask me any questions while you're lying down. That's also a fine time. Okay. If there's anything that pops in. Okay, so nothing here. And I'm going to lift up the back, don't help me. What do you notice about the back then? It just feels ever so comfortable. Yeah, you've, it's become more comfortable because you've actually flattened a bit more onto the table. I can feel all of my back. Exactly, touching. all of the back. It's, yes, touching. you've got it right. So all the back is now touching. Beforehand it had quite a, a dip in your lower back. Mm. It was like I could have put my hand in there. Mm. And now there's no, there's no gap at all. So same thing, I'm going to move your head.
So I'm just going around moving a head, arms and legs. And you're doing the great job of letting me do all of this work and getting your brain into a condition where you're giving me control over the movement, mm. which is a certain sort of condition. You're, you're allowing me to do stuff, but not participating. Mm. So you could call this a form of surrendering, overly, overly controlling. Mm. Surrendering being a control freak, for instance, that we all are. You're letting me be the mover and you're the allower, which is it's quite right. a big deal, isn't it? You know, you're, you're, co you're contributing a huge amount to your condition right now because your brain is getting into a surrender mode mm -hmm. rather than an overactive, a control freak mode. If you're control freaking right now, you'd say, I'm not going to let you move my leg. I'm going to do it for you or stop you moving it. Mm -hmm. You're not doing either. You're letting me do the moving. And you're doing the allowing and, and surrendering. And that gets your brain into a different condition. So what's happening is, you're quite right, the back is spreading on the table. It's, it's lengthening itself and it's widening, it's opening and spreading. And your neck, can you sense what's happening in the neck and the spine? It just feels effortless relaxation. Effortless relaxation, yeah. The neck has got no tension in it, it's effortless. Yeah. So even though you're in the gravity field, there's a quality of weightlessness to it, almost. I've got your legs, that's fine. And nothing here, nothing in the hips now. Yeah, that's fine, leave that knee up there for a while. How's your brain doing? Well, all I keep thinking of hmm. is when can I come again and <laughs> uh, hmm. this go on for several hours? <laughs> <laughs> so that you've, you've hit on a very important point. Obviously, the idea wouldn't be for you to come all the time, but for me to somehow teach you how to get this going for yourself. You asked a question earlier on about you don't know if this is a, a treatment or a or a session or whatever, and it's actually a, a lesson. It's actually a lesson. And the lesson is for me to give you the capacity to recover this or move towards this quality and deepen it on your own, rather than you get dependent on me to have the rather rare experience of deep ease and relaxation. So that's why this work is usually called education, you're having sessions to learn something, not learning anything about your anatomy or physiology, but learning through the experience of this condition so that your nervous system can navigate back to it more and more without me being around. Now I'd be lying if I said that one session is enough to teach your system how to navigate back on its own. So most people would have a, a series of, of sessions to embody it, to cultivate this capacity, to let go of stuff that we're holding, that we're holding on to unconsciously so that 
this real thing is liberated because it's not me, this is your stuff. It's your freedom, it's your ease, it's your deep calm. Yeah. My job is to help you recover this as yours. So unlike a massage where you're very dependent on someone sort of pushing their muscles and releasing little muscle groups, and you go, oh, that's nice, this is a different sort of thing, where your nervous system is learning how to self-regulate, how to regulate back to its original design. Because this is normal, this, this is it's quite rare, but it's, it's natural, it's organic. This is where we're designed to return to after we're freaking out, after an emergency. after the, the, the major demands of everyday life, this is where you recover to. But most of us don't recover to this, as you know. It's a rarity. We get stuck in hypervigilance, states of anxiety and depression, and effort and busyness and trying, and collapse and being wound up. So here's an interesting question for you. What does, what does the body feel like right now? The whole body, all of it. That's one. Hmm. What's it communicating back to you? What's it feeding back to you? Top half is um, just being. Exactly, it's just being, it's not doing anything at all. Yeah. It's just resting in, in, in itself. Mm. Yeah. Bottom half still a bit yes. unsure. Yeah, okay, so the bottom half is doing something. Mm. You're holding your knees up there. Yeah. yeah. It's not the same as having your knees, knees down where you might start going to sleep. Mm. So this keeps you a little bit awake. Mm. Helps you stay awake. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, your knees are up. Because <laughs> <laughs> I don't want you to go to sleep. I want this to be part of your everyday. Mm. So you're right this part of you is doing absolutely nothing. And what's the brain doing with the, the, the body in this condition? Um, I suppose because I'm learning, mm. I feel as I'm processing a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, you are processing. That's a really, really good word, by the way. I think that's exactly what you're doing. You're processing. You're processing stuff that normally you wouldn't process. And that will include all sorts of thoughts, feelings and sensations. You're processing them. You're digesting them. You're becoming acquainted with them. Most of the time we don't have any time at all to process or digest what happens in life, what, what happened historically. But this is processing. I think you are exactly processing. Nothing here, nothing here. Yeah. So I'm still the mover and you're just allowing. And your brain is not getting overly reactive to even the thoughts about is the camera on or off. it so nothing here and nothing in the hips
Mm. Yeah, that's it. Nothing here. Good. So again, your tongue rests on the bottom of the mouth. I've got the weight of your head and it doesn't matter where your head goes. Okay, I'm going to get you off the table in a second. And still nothing happens in the neck or your back or your torso. And I'm going to take the weight of your leg. Yeah. So what's going to happen in a minute is I'm going to get you off the table. You're going to, not yet, roll onto your left-hand side. I'm going to take your head and you'll be sitting like this on the side of the table. But I'll do all the hard work. All you need to do is roll right now onto your left-hand side. Roll and roll, feet over the side, and then wait there. Okay, so right now you're in a certain condition. What do you like there, right now? Oh, I'm so relaxed. Yeah, but um, not collapsed. No. You're not, oh, I'm so relaxed, Anthony. I'm so peaceful, that's mm -hmm. why. Yeah. yeah, you're peaceful but not collapsed, so you're awake and peaceful. Mm. That's a lovely combination. Not peaceful half asleep, mm. drowsy, but peaceful and alert with a lovely spine that's lifting itself. And then you take it into living, into activity even more. Help yourself off the table with your hands. Yeah, that's fine, and then wait there. And then walk around. Yeah, that's fine. Yep. That's so funny. And then you can sit down and we can have a chat if you if you wish. That's fine. And then wait there for a while. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so wow. 